The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, folks. Welcome to the February 23rd, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon, although right now it's just past eight o'clock in the morning. So if you are listening live, we would love to hear from you. You can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, we've got you covered there too. Go ahead and send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside that subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question, of course, in our Tigers Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Les Show. Right now, we got the U.S. equity futures pointed higher. The uh, Dow up 254 points, 33,779 is the print. The NASDAQ 101 and a quarter percent, 168 points. The ES Mini up nine tenths or 37 points. And the Russell's up about one full percentage point. That's about 19 points to the upside. Over in Asia last night, you had the Shanghai finish higher, as was the Hang Seng, as did the uh, 200 uh, Australia index. Uh, over in Europe this morning, you've got the DAX and the FTSE both trading higher. Gold's off nine or eight bucks right now, trading at eighteen ninety nine. Silver off fourteen cents, trading at twenty four seventeen. You've got light sweet crude trading out ninety one sixty nine. That's back twenty two pennies. The thirty year Treasury down thirteen ticks. She's trading out at one fifty two eighteen. So let's go begin with um, let's go begin with where we're at. Where did we do yesterday? And to do that, we go take a look at our four daily equity future contracts out here. So just beginning in the left hand panel, that's the ES mini. We can see that yesterday was a test and rejection of support. Support in this case being the bottom of that profile. You can't bust them down. You try to bust them up. Bust them up would mean what? That would mean trying to move up to about the 4379-ish level. We'll show you where that, that number comes from momentarily. In the case of the NQ, it's trading below the bottom of its daily profile. But what it did do is it went and tested and rejected its January 24th swing point low. Again, can't bust them to the downside. What do you try to do? Bust them to the upside. That'd be about the 14112 level for the NQ. The Dow tested and rejected the bottom of its swing point. That was at the 33366 level. Can't bust them down. What do you try to do? Bust them to the upside. Where does that take us to? Potentially 34310. The case of the Russell 2000, not only did it test the bottom of its daily profile yesterday, which it rejected, it also tested the top of its swing point. Now, its swing point is the 28th of January. It's the 24th for the ESNQ and the Dow Equity Future contract. So you've got a double test and rejection out here. Does that give it the more oomph? No, not necessarily. The price right now is trading above, just slightly above the level where we would think that it would run into its counter trend rally. So Where's Stevie coming up with those numbers? Well, we're going to switch our panels. We're going to go to the white background charts for the four daily equity future contracts out here. Oops, we were going to try to do that, but obviously Stevie went to the wrong panel. That's the intraday chart. Not that you don't want to look at that. It just not that doesn't flow with uh, with my presentation here. Now we're back to the daily chart. So what we can also see is in addition to pushing lower inside the ESENQ and the uh, Dow, Prices moving lower, doing the less, less relative energy, generates that Rhodes momentum indicator signal, and therefore a bullish reversal candle would confirm a bottom. <clears throat> 
Well, you've got a bullish and golfing candle right now. It's only 8, 10 in the morning inside the ES Mini. So uh, that's suggesting, okay, that possible. Now, where would price run to? It would be that oscillator and change line would be the first level of resistance. So that's about 43.80 in the ES, about 14.112 in the NQ. 34.310 in the uh, Dow. Now that number's going to change up and down as price moves up and down. So use that as kind of the range right now. But when you take a look at the Russell 2000 in the very bottom right-hand panel, price is trading just above that red oscillator and change line. So this could be suggested to move up to about the 2061 level. So that's what's going on in the daily equity futures contracts. But I don't know if that really gives us the message because, I mean, I'm giving you the message here or its message is that price should go target those red oscillator and change lines. Can't bust them down. Test areas with lighter volume volume, so on and so forth. But really what I think we need to do is do more of a deeper dive. So let's begin by taking a look at the ES Mini. Rip this apart here. We'll do this by going to kind of a, uh, I guess what I call a trading view for the ES uh, or for really anything that we would put up here from a future standpoint. And that is when I get here, there we go. So now we take a look at, we got the ES Mini. You just have the daily panel in the upper left-hand corner. And then we move to all of the different intraday time frames here that Stevie is tracking. So you've got the five hour, that's 300 minutes. The two hour, that's 120 minutes. The one hour, 60 minutes. Hello. 30 minute chart, the 15, the 10, and the five out here. So we're really trying to, you know, really get granular here to interpret what the uh, message of the markets is. Now, when I take a look at these charts, so there's a couple of different things that uh, show, that, that stick out to me. What would those be? Well, let's just start on the very left-hand side. So we've got the daily. We know price is pushing lower, trading into that January 24th swing point, testing and rejecting the bottom of its daily profile out here. So that suggests that run to that oscillator and change line. The five-hour time frame chart, do we have any kind of message out here? We really don't. Not one that I see. Price is back inside its profile. That would suggest to move maybe up to the 43.72 or 44.1 level, but no bottoming pattern. Allah, we move over to the 120 minute time frame chart. And as price was moving lower yesterday, it was a two hour chart that ended up generating that Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Price is moving higher. You're in bar number eight as we speak right now. I believe that current session, well, I can't tell you that, that way, I'll tell you this way. Current session is going to complete at 10 o'clock. So we just began bar number eight out here. Now, if bar number eight can take out the high of the day earlier this morning, that high at 43.45.50, then that would say between, see, it's going to be bar number eight. So that's 10 o'clock, bar number nine at noon. So that would say between 10 and 2 is what you'd be looking for. I know that's wide, but we're looking at a two-hour time frame chart. Between 10 and 2 is when you could see a TD9 count top. Now, that TD9 count top, should it form, should take price up to the 43.58 to 43.66 level out here. That's the two-hour time frame chart which is really giving us kind of the, the, the better of the messages out here from a timing frame standpoint. Well, other than the 15-minute chart right now, the 15-minute chart right here, I'll just expand this out. You can see that just on a 15-minute basis, what price did was it formed a TD9 count. Now we're really getting granular. But it formed a TD9 count high. Let me get my cursor out here. I can tell you exactly when that pattern came in on the 15-minute chart. That was at 445 this morning. Price moves lower. It moves lower where? Right into the TD9 count breakout level. That was at 43.18. Yeah, it gets just slightly below that. That was with bar number nine of a TD9 count. So you've got a little bit of a consolidation inside. So if you're looking at the granular level, what's going on, you've got a, a little consolidation inside the ES Mini simply between 43.18 and 43.45. So that's what the message coming from its charts out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back from this uh, breakout here. Well, we'll continue on with this. You know, I've got something else that I think uh, we'll do, unless I see some requests uh, by email or inside the Tiger's Den, or certainly you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first 
first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious tech, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. This is the Early Bird uh, Special Edition. Now uh, we're uh, coming to you live. It's 8.18 in the morning. If you're listening live, thanks so much for or listening at the 1 o'clock hour, I should say. Uh, thanks so much for doing that. We'll make today's show as pertinent as we can for you. We're going to go to our first request, and this is the Early Birder, Hector and Patty. Uh, they want to take a look at Wells Fargo Corporation, and uh, Hector's just looking for a potential entry point, it looks like, for mid- to long-term holding. So, Hector, as we take a look at this black set of uh, background charts out here, what we know is that prices are trading below the bottom of its daily profile, not necessarily a good thing, but right into trend line support. So it needs to hold yesterday's low. Yesterday's low, by the way, was uh, 54.70. If it doesn't do that, then price should make a run back to the uh, 52.77 level. I'll pull over my white background chart shortly and, and show you that. That's the TD9 count breakout area. So that's a possibility. Uh, price is now back inside its weekly profile. That means it's below 56.35. And if price remains below that, that's a suggestion that it could move back to its trend line, which looks like it might be in about the 52-ish type area out there, maybe 51 and change. Now, price on a weekly, on a monthly basis, I should say, is above the top of its profile. So that uh, looks uh, bullish. So let's pull over the uh, white background charts. When uh, Wells Fargo topped, it was with a uh, TD9 count top, as a matter of fact. That was the high from February 9th. Price never closed above that high. That high, by the way, was 59.38. So now we've got a t potential TD. It's hard to say. We only have bar number six, so very difficult to say we might have a TD9 count bottom that's forming. But what price should do, Hector, is pull back to its breakout level. That's at 52.77. So that's the general area that in at for an entry uh, point out here. And ideally what you do is you'd get the Wells Fargo to pull back, even test and then reject its January 24 swing point. Maybe it's just the high of that. But uh, so it looks like we're a few days early on a potential bottom signal from its daily time frame. So that's the target area, 52.77. Is there an A to B equals CD to the downside? There is. So that's another question that uh, Tector had asked. So let's pull this out. It's easier. It's the, the only way I can really draw these in is with the black background chart. So in this case here, the A point is the high from the trading day of February 10th. The B point is the low from February 14th. 
and the C point is a retracement up into February 15th. So you can see we're at the 1 to now 1.272 level. This is why you do not buy just any A to B equals CD or sell any A to B equals CD. Or if you want to do that, go right ahead. I just think you'll get something handed to you that you really don't want handed to you. Instead, wait for the cavalry to arrive. Wait for a bullish reversal candle in an A to B equals CD to the downside. And then you'll at least have a, a logical reason to go ahead and uh, take that uh, trading position. We don't have that here. So, Hector, if you did get a bullish reversal candle today, then that could be a Gartley buy. That would be a Gartley buy. Uh, plain and simple, and then that TD9 count doesn't likely fa uh, take place, and then you'd have a potential for a bottom. But uh, let's take a look at the weekly chart, though, you know, just to make sure that we take into consideration a little bit longer term. You did say midterm out here, and uh, from a midterm standpoint, the weekly has a confirmed road momentum indicator top now. And as long as price remains below that green oscillator and change line, 55.91, odds favor that price will eventually make its way back to the 47.51 to 48.77 level out there. So you've got a different, potentially different message from the daily, although you don't have that different message right now. So it just says you've got to be patient. Wait, let's see how the day plays out. So, Hector and Patty, thanks so much for waking up uh, and being the early bird special out here. And uh, have a uh, wonderful Wednesday. We've got uh, Victor on the line. Victor, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Yeah, I'm looking for PLTR. I see a lot of volume. I don't know if anything's going on. They have a lot of shares outstanding. I don't know what will ever tighten up the stock. They just hate it. To me, it's the future. It's like the next Microsoft AI. But what, do you see anything going on with that stock? Well, you know, Victor, we've got the black background charts up here that show us the uh, profiles. And for Palantir, it's just the daily and the weekly that really generate those. And prices below both of those levels of support. So we'll take a look at my white background chart, see if there's anything there. But right now, the black background chart is saying this wants to come all the way back. In fact, it's trading into its IPO level that takes you back to September of 2020. So that says that uh, 894. The low of that uh, swing point could easily be hit out there. And that's just looking mm -hmm. at the weekly time frame chart. So let's take a look at Palantir for its the white background chart, see if there's any kind of bottom signals. And the answer is there is not. There is a Rhodes momentum indicator signal that's been triggered. If price were to close, if we were to get a bullish reversal candle, Victor, then we'd be looking for a move up to 1159. And in your other battles would be 1265 and 1355 and 14 bucks. What Palantir really needs to do to signal a breakout message is close about $14. If it does that, then you can see a move to 1857. But right now, the daily time frame says no bottom signal. The weekly time frame, no bottom signal. Even if I look to just a short-term 30-minute chart, well, I do see a TD9 count bottom here, which could lead to a little bit of a bounce. But that bounce should find resistance at 1119. But back to your basic question, do I see anything here? We take a look at the longer-term time frame charts, the daily and weekly. We do not. So more likely than not, this wants to continue to head lower. Lower lows. Does that help yeah, you? today's the first day, you know, you have options expiration on Friday. So today, normally you're delta neutral again Wednesday. So I just see this as a bounce and we have lower lows and we get the 20, 30% correction like in 2008 or 9. I don't think this will be over until next March. It's possible. It might be over uh, this March, though. So be careful out there. What we want to do I is just simply. I think you're going to retouch the 2000 uh, when this whole thing started two years ago in March and we had this fake rally. I think you're going to touch there easy. There's All right, so that's a, uh, what do you? You think? got it. You got. What do I think? I think. I think you're wrong. <laughs> that's what you know, I think. You think we're gonna have one more rally? Well, I, I, here's 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 what here, <clears throat> here's what I think is a real possibility. I, I think there's a real possibility, Victor, that we're gonna see a, a significant uh, low uh, sometime in the next uh, couple of weeks. Me sometime too. between now. Yeah. Sometime between now and the end of March, if that low comes in. So let me just let me just make this statement. If that low comes in, Victor, we will take out the highs of our market. So I would say, now, now the other possibility is we don't get that low that comes in. But everything right now, I'm just got to take this one step, step at a time. If the low that I'm looking for, and we've got patterns that are suggesting that low and other things, if that low does not come in, if it does come in and that low gets taken out, then I could be back in your camp, but not until that stage out here. You know, the one thing, Victor, and everybody else, including myself, that we always have to take into consideration is the global flow of capital. If we just think U.S.-centric, 
we're gonna we're not gonna succeed at this game here. This game is all connected, and we have to think in a much larger term. And there's a lot of problems going on around the world. We happen to be the reserve currency of the world as we speak right now. This is where people will find confidence. As as much as you might think uh, the, the U.S. is screwed up or what have you, this is still where the confidence is at. And until that changes, uh -huh. when things really go to heck in a handbasket around the globe, you know, look for people to find safe haven in the U.S. dollar. Look for people to find safe haven in U.S. centric companies out there. So that's those are the things that could really propel this market higher. Are that you that wrong and happen. I'm right? No, not, we don't know that just yet. But I think that to somehow believe that uh, there's not that possibility that we find some significant bottom that forms here in the uh, coming weeks. That's not the game plan that I'm on. That's not the game plan that I'll be looking for. So I hope that helps you out. Oh, no, you didn't answer the question, the million-dollar question. Which is? Which the low? How low do you think we go? What happens oh. if we get rid of Biden? Do you think we'll get a low? Yeah, so I, you know, the, as far as how low, really, I'm more about patterns than I am about, you know, a specific price point out there. So I, I think I did answer the million-dollar question. And, you know, in a couple of months, we'll find out. So, hey, Victor, good to talk to you. Thanks so much for calling Get on early. The Trump way. Thank you, bet. Take care. Steve Rhodes with TFNM, folks. We'll be right back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, last night, I lost a little bit of sleep. Uh, and the reason is, uh, yesterday, we had a call from Brent in Martinez, California. Hopefully, Brent is up uh, early in the morning uh, listening to the uh, show. And, and I asked him, really, an unfair question. 
And so uh, at the time, I didn't I didn't think it was unfair, but that was playing through some things in my my mind. But 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 after I was replaying the show in my mind yesterday, you know, that that was a thought that came to my mind. And the unfair question was I just simply asked him if he thought just looking for people's thoughts and opinions, uh, whether the uh, what's going on between Russia and Ukraine, whether that was likely to turn into is that just a geopolitical event? Or is this going to turn into something worse, something that could drag the U.S. into some kind of war? Now, the reason that I asked that question, and so now I can clarify it, and it's just a little bit easier to understand. It really is a little bit of a follow-up to uh, to Victor's uh, thoughts out, out here. Is Here is a chart of the S&P 500 with all types of what I'll call geopolitical type events out here. And oftentimes, people will think some of those events turn into, oh, geez, the market ought to croak and keep heading uh, lower out here. You know, for example, the U.S. withdrawal from uh, the Russian nuclear treaty out here back in the uh, time frame of uh, August of 2019. That, that didn't lead to any kind of crash to the downside. So you can see a number of things that are out here. Uh, Brexit, as an example, if you go back on the left-hand side, I mean, all kinds of of events out here. And so the next event is uh, where Putin's ordered troops to eastern Ukraine. And we've seen some of the small skirmishes or what have you. I'm not up on the latest that's taken place over the last 12 hours out here. But, But the question is, if this is just a geopolitical type event out here, then you've got to be thinking uh, that as soon as we see that that looks like that's turning, that then this all of a sudden ties into this potential for some type of March bottom. Now, if it's not a geopolitical event, then this is the reason that I asked the question. Give me a moment here. A uh, slideshow. Current. Current slide. There we go. The reason is because if this is a war that the U.S. gets dragged into, then the answer is the market heads lower and the market will head lower. And forget about the, 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 the uh, written stuff out here is for a different presentation. So I don't even know if it's specific with regard to what we're talking about today. I'm not reading those, but I'm just really looking at the chart out here. And what I do know is that when uh, at least for going back and taking a look at history, we know the way that the U.S. stock market responds. Yeah, you see these rallies, but in times of war where there's uncertainty or no optimistic outcome, markets head lower. Here's the Korean War. We can take a look at go from the Korean War. We can take a look at Pearl Harbor. You know, you've got a positive outcome that doesn't necessarily going to identify the bottom, but it's going to identify the change in trend, so to speak. You get the big hamburger, maybe versus the bun. Sometimes you can time it towards the uh, bottom. Here, uh, even uh, even heart attack by Eisenhower out here. Uh, you can see what the U.S. stock market does. No one all of a sudden it believes there's some progress or belief, uh, you know, that, that ended up uh, identifying a bottom. Persian Gulf War, we can see three different instances. It was the third instance that finally uh, took hold out there. But every time there was a sign of optimism, what we saw inside the uh, markets was a uh, and we've seen it take place in today's markets with today's situations out there. We have seen the bounces that have taken place over the last several days when there's a sign of optimism out here. So it just shows you the relevance of this. But the relevance, though, and the question that I unfairly asked yesterday without really giving this uh, background out here was, is this a geopolitical event? Or is this something else? Now, we've got both thoughts that came out of the tiger's den. Some people thinking that it's something else out there, which it may be. And if it's that something else and it's a war, well, then we still have to, uh, that we're somehow pulled into, we still have to look for some type of optimistic event out there that is going to uh, then help us to identify at least a viable bottom. So I don't know which of the two it is. Now, to the Folks that think that this is something worse and we're headed lower, well, that can be borne out really just by this chart as well. And what I mean by that now, this is just looking at closing prices out here. So it's not looking at the lows. You and I know that the lows of the 24th uh, have not been tested with the exception of the NASDAQ 100. I believe the NDX 100 did test and reject the actual uh, uh, swing point low out there. But here when we just take a look at closes, we can see on a closing base, the S&P 500 closed below the low from the 24th. So if we were just basing things on a closing base, that's not how we do the A to B equals CD pattern, we would draw in a A to B and say we've got a confirmed A to B equals CD, whether it's with or without volume. We don't really have that. Uh, at least because I'm not going to change the way we do A to B equals CD patterns out there. But I at least wanted to present this. That way I can sleep easy tonight, not worry about, uh, you know, uh, 
um, uh, asking a an unfair question. So I apologize uh, for that. But now at least you've got the uh, background and understanding of uh, of uh, what we're looking at here. And I think that this, you know, that's a fundamental aspect right now of what's going on geopolitically out here. And that's why that chart is always fun for me to go back to. Now, we've got a request out here inside the Tiger's Den. I believe it was a take a look at SoFi. I don't recall who asked. My apology. That's long gone, but at least I remembered. So let's get back to the uh, three panels. Where is it? Here we go. The three panel chart. Let's get SoFi in here. And I don't recall what the question was, but we're just going to simply analyze SoFi. That is SoFi Technologies, which yesterday closed below the bottom of its daily profile and its swing point from January the 28th. That swing point had 78 million shares. It was taken out with 77 million shares out there. So we're gonna say that kind of confirms a further move lower. Now, uh, Palantir and SoFi look very similar, don't they? Price in this case here headed back to its IPO, maybe lower. The actual IPO low was 1010. That takes you back into November of 2020. So that's where price looks like it's headed into. Uh, if I pull over SoFi on the white background chart, just look for any kind of signals out here. Nothing on the, uh, well, yesterday's close below, it was a close below a hammer candle from January 28th out there. So we know if you close below the low of a hammer candle, if you're long, you're wrong. That's the expression that we like to use out here. So that's not looking good. So no bottom on the daily time frame, no signal on the weekly, although on a weekly basis, this likely will become bar number eight. Um, this says you could see a bottom that would take place between this week and then next week or the following week out there. You've got a Rhodes momentum indicator signal being triggered here on the monthly time frame. That'd be nice if once that confirmed. But with regard to SoFi, it looks like uh, you know taking out that low from yesterday, the low of a hammer candle, no other bottom signal here. It does look like it wants to continue to head lower out there. So I hope that helps uh, whoever had made that request out. And uh, thanks so much for doing so. There's a request that has uh, come in from, I believe, Nicholas. Let me uh, get back here to my phone. It is Nicholas, and Nicholas wants to take a look at the SMHs. So let's punch up the SMHs. Let's get those going on the black background charts, and let's read his question. Good morning, Steve. Would you please go over the SMHs? Where's the OUL, or his resistance, target on a counter trend uh, bounce? Okay, so as we take a look, here's what we know about the SMHs yesterday. They tested and rejected their swing point from January 28th. That swing point had 11 million shares. You did it on 9 million shares. You can't bust them down. You try to bust them up. So first, when we take a look at the daily time frame chart here for the SMHs, we can see that price is also below its little rising trend line. So that's the first level that price needs to, to, to get above, which is about 268.12. Where is this trading in the pre-market? SMH. See if it's trading above that level. 267. So it's really trading into that resistance level. So I know, and I'll, I'll pull over for you. I will pull over the OUL, the daily and so forth. But that's really your first level of resistance. If price can get above that little rising trend line, I'd draw that in if I were you. I'd just simply connect the low from the 28th to the uh, low of the uh, 14th out there. Price can get back above that. Then it could move all the way to its descending trend line, which is in about the 280-ish type area out there. You're with inside the bullish structure of its weekly. No, I take that back. 256, 270, 318. Oh, no, this is a uh, – so you are inside a bullish weekly profile out here. Uh, hey, let me answer this question before we go to the break. Where's red oscillator and change line on the daily time frame, Nicholas? It's 267.90. I believe that's where price is trading. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Hope you're right there. Having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. If you're listening to live, which is 8.42 in the morning, thanks so much for uh, joining me uh, here today. Uh, obviously, this will be replayed between 1 and 2, trying to make this as pertinent as we can for that time frame. So the SMH has definitely tested and rejected that uh, swing point from uh, uh, January and uh, suggests to move higher. 267.90 is the first level of resistance out there. Uh, really, I'm just going to look at, uh, uh, for uh, Nicholas, the intraday charts out here. And the reason is uh, because he really is trading this from an intraday perspective. So... The first thing you're looking for is a close above 267.47. If you get that, we're looking at just a 15-minute chart. Your next battle is at 269.61. Above that, it's 272.94. Those would be the levels on a short-term time frame chart where price would uh, target if it can clear those areas. Those are the TD9 count breakdown resistance levels. The 30-minute chart formed a nice roads momentum indicator bottom. Also formed wave number seven. That's letter G. So you got two bottoms there. Two bottoms stronger than one bottom. Not that I know of. They're just two bottoms. And uh, price pulled back yesterday into the close and tested that red oscillator and change line. So its battles out of 30 minute basis are 267.07, 268.71, 270.35. And finally, 272.51. If you can clear that 272.51, you likely head into the descending trend line on the daily basis, which gets us into that 280 ish range. That would be the following TD9 count breakdown level out here. On a 65 minute chart out here, uh, I tried to do that. So you got a Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom. You close above 266. It says I want to make run for the 276 level out there. The 130 minute chart, a TD9 count bottom. So yeah, this is uh, if if you know. So this, uh, thank you, Nicholas, for even asking about this chart here, or this instrument, I should say, and then having us go through these different time frame charts because this is when something tries to make a bottom on a daily basis. You then like to go down and take a look at the intraday time frame to see if you're getting those signals. And folks, you can see that we are for each of those different time. Time frames that we track with one exception that being the 195 minute chart i know that's not a normal time frame that people take a look at but when you're trading an instrument a cash instrument a stock out here you've got six and a half hours worth of trading signals you'd like those bars to be equal well there's 295 minute bars in a trading day there's 330 minute chart uh in a uh, trading day there's uh five uh, 65 minute charts uh, and so forth so you like to have equal time frames out there so uh i hope that helps you out nicholas and best of luck to you let's go out to gary in michigan gary thanks for calling thanks for holding how are you 
Hey, Steve, great. Uh, I love to start my morning with Steve-O in the morning. So, uh, listen, um, uh, it's just an, I, I want to first off say, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you very much for asking out there. Much appreciated. Okay. And uh, the 30th okay. Treasury, the CLT, uh, is what I, I believe you're calling about. What are well, you, what you, what you doing here? Macro how can I show help? What you're doing, uh, some of the macro stuff I love. And, you know, um, and if you, so you can take it from a, not only a specific trading the TLT now, but I'd like to see your vision for, you know, as it as it plays out in the charts in your mind going forward here in the next three to six months possibly. Well so I would I would answer that question really like like this because I, I think your question is really suggesting would are we what do we need to see a change in trend? To the downside, is that, or am I mis misinterpreting? No, no, I'm looking for the rates to go up, uh, I mean the TLT to go up and the uh, rates to go down. Is my so here, here's a quarterly quarter. chart. Sure, okay. So rates rates that go up, and and bonds to uh, fall. So if we take a look at the thirty year out here, uh, no, this no. is the quarterly time. Reverse that, Steve. -O. But anyways, whatever. It's oh, whatever really you're trying to say. But I'm looking for the rates to go down and the bond price to go Got up. It. To okay. 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 So let's so let's take a look at that then. That. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying. So, uh, to do that, here's here's what uh, here's what I'm going to switch charts. So we're going to go right to the white background charts. That that support at least that thought process. So let's first take a look at it. And that thought process is really coming from the daily time frame. So I'm just going to expand this chart out here. Whoops. And so as we take a look at the daily time frame chart, we have a TD9 count bottom. We have a Roach Mintum indicator bottom. So we got two bottoms out here. Again, two not stronger than one, but you've got two bottom signals out here. Now, what price is doing, Gary, it's trading with inside its daily profile. So the level of resistance that price needs to take out is 154.17. That's the actual top of the profile. I know it says 154.55313. You've got to do the math conversion here on the white background chart, unfortunately. The folks at Ninja Trader. So when you do that conversion, it's 154.17. If you get it close above 154.17, then that should take price to 156.05. So what I want to share with you is your, is your thought process of rates going lower, bonds moving higher the daily time frame chart here supports that now further support will come from taking out the resistance levels which has been unable to do as we speak so far any questions gary about about this chart nope i'll have to follow it afterwards excuse me on the phone okay perfect so let's uh let's do this let's get off of the daily chart here and let's just see again go to a longer term time frame that would be the weekly chart well if we look at the weekly chart now we have a td9 count bottom that uh, will be completed this week. The reason I say it will be completed is right now the low is on last week's low, the TD9 count, but you still could get a lower low this week and it still would maintain that uh, pattern. Now, in the case of the weekly chart, the price level that would need to be overcome is in about the 154, is 155. Really, so price would need to overcome 155 to say, okay, from that intermediate term time frame, you're on the right track. Now, if price closes below, like right now, I'm going to use last week's low. Let's assume that that is the low of the TD9 count pattern. That low out there is 12. That would then start to say, hey, maybe the thought process uh, that rates are going to go lower and bonds are going to move higher is off the table for the moment. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, for sure. That's what I'm looking for is the timing part to get it. Yeah. yeah. So you've got a weekly confirmation of a TD9 count. You've got the daily uh, signal that you like out there. The monthly chart says, I don't know what you guys are talking about. And the reason why it's saying that is it because right now it's trading below the low of a TD9 count that formed in March of 2021. And if price closes below that low, 153.07, that suggests, Gary, that price should go ahead to the 139.14 area. So you really need to see now, we don't know how the month will end. It's, uh, I don't know, the, I know the month ends, uh, I don't know when, when that day is, the trading day is. Um, when, when is the last trading day of the month, do you know? It's, it's one of uh, uh, I think I it is, I think it is Monday. Yeah, it's Monday out there. So on Monday, Gary, this will be important to you. If you were to get a close below 153.07 and you're 152.20 now, the bigger picture is saying, hey, what you're seeing take place in the weekly and the daily is nothing more than a counter trend move. And the larger picture is that it wants to move lower. So it, whereas if the TD9 count bottom holds on the daily time frame, on the monthly time frame, then it supports it supports your conclusions at this stage. Okay? Cool. That's what I need to hear the man. I appreciate Perfect. everything well, you I, do. 
Well, well, thanks. I appreciate that. So, uh, and, and thanks so much for calling in and, and listening early. So have a, have a, uh, have a wonderful Wednesday. And I'm going to be sending this out, and I recommend everybody do to get more people listening. So, hey, we we people. appreciate we appreciate that. Thanks so much, Gary. Much appreciated. Right. You bet. That was Gary in New Buffalo, Michigan. A real quick check here. Let me see if there's any other requests that have come in. I don't see anything. So then, where do we go from here? Oh, there was a request inside the Tigers Den. And I, I apologize inside the YouTube channel to take a look at Goldilocks. So let's go take a look at gold. The question is: Is gold moving higher, moving lower? Uh, let me actually get uh, to my charts out here. What I can share with you right now as we go into this break is gold is attempting to form a new daily profile. Where's the charts? Good Lord. Um, here it is. Sorry about that, folks. So right now, there's a new profile. It's attempting to form. We're using Stevie's advanced Doppler tool. You've got support at 1879.40 and resistance at 1908.60. We get back to the break. Answer the question about the gold that higher or lower from here. Be right back. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We're uh, taking a look at the gold out here, uh, trading right now at uh, 1902. And as we take a look at this, there's a brand new profile that is attempting to form. Now, I say attempting to form. We're using my advanced Doppler tool. It detects uh, profiles as they're beginning to form. This will not be confirmed until this evening, this evening at 601. But right now, we do know where buyers and sellers are at. And the question was, is gold moving higher or lower? Right now, it's just consolidating with inside its daily profile. So the resistance level that price would need to take out is 1908.60. If it can do that, that would be an additional signal that price will make its way up to the 1956.40 level. That's its one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the upside. If price closes below 1879.40, now all of this assumes that the profile takes hold, but right now we know where buyers and sellers are at. If price closes below 1879.40, that suggests that we head lower. Now head lower to where? Well, we'd have to go take a look at our other charts to figure all that out. So that's coming from the daily time frame. And the person in the uh, YouTube channel, I don't know what the time frame it is that they were really requesting, but right now you've got to consider consolidation between support and resistance very clear we took a look at that so that's helpful now let's go take a look at our kind of our granular charts out here back to the daily time frame you can also see that there is no topping signal uh today is maybe going to farm maybe going to form bar number six out here so no no topping pattern that we have in place now that's different we take a look at the intraday charts the five hour chart the 300 minute the two hour chart the 120 minute the 60 minute chart they've each got roads mint indicator tops out there uh but price is not busted through any key levels of support so it's just been kind of a sideways this churning move out there if price were to close below 1894.40 for two consecutive bars. That is the TD9 breakout level on the two-hour chart. Then you could look at a move to 1875. If you close below 1890.30 on the five-hour chart, you know, and that's going to take longer to do, that could signal a move back to 1852. The 60-minute chart supported 1892. That's its TD9 breakout level. We can see as there was a bit of a rally this morning, and uh, what price did was to stop right at one of the TD9 count breakdown levels, 1906.20 out there. So if you're asking me right now, intercession, where is price headed to? It's more likely to be price should pull back to the 1898-1900 level. We're at 1902. That's just a couple of bucks. Folks, stay tuned. Tommy O'Brien with the Morning Market Kickoff is up next. If you're listening at One Live, it's David White. He'll uh, lead you home, and Tom O'Brien will close it up. Take care, folks. Building wealth trading in the stock market.